Thank you for checking in again, 26 Sports. This is your host, Mike Reza, on with the one and only Luis Angel Feliciano, Golden Boys, one of their top prospects. Uh, we got him on live, so let's see. Anybody that wants to check in and see what he's up to, go ahead and leave some chats. Uh, but right now, Luis, how you doing, bro? How you going on? I'm doing good, man. Thank God everything is all right. Uh, you know, just been trying to be productive as possible during, you know, all the uh, all this uh, pandemic stuff. Yeah. But, uh, you know, just trying to stay busy, man, trying to, uh, trying to stay ready and, and see what happens. Yeah, definitely, man. And now with everything that's going on, as you said, with the pandemic, with, with all, I mean, the uncertainty that we've gone through, uh, how were you living during that time? You know, I mean, it goes from some people knowing, oh, I have a fight, this is going on, to... Man, you know, when am I going to step in the ring? I might need some money soon. How were you living through that? Yeah, man, it's been tough. I mean, I remember, uh, so, you know, we were getting ready for something either, you know, late uh, uh, late April or early May, uh, right before, you know, uh, the, the all the, you know, the lockdown stuff starting occurring. But, um, but yeah, man, it's tough. Obviously, you know, not a, you know, there, there's fighters that, you know, they need a, you know, that's, that's how they live. You know, they got to pay yeah. the bills and. You know, and all that. So uh, eventually, I mean, all through all the you know, lockdown stuff, the quarantine time, I was uh, I headed back to Milwaukee. I was here in Los Angeles. I was in Puerto Rico. I made a couple trips out there. Um, you know, I had some stuff, uh, you know, going on where I just I got honored and you know all that. You know, yeah. it was, it was uh, you know some pretty special stuff. Uh, but then I came back to uh, California, and I was out here just getting ready. And uh, and then yeah, so all this happened. So then I eventually went home for a couple months, you know. Uh, but at least I got to spend some time with my family, and uh, you know, just linking up with them. And and uh, yeah, so now I've been back. Uh, been back for three months now. So we've, we've been training all this time. So uh, you know, see if uh, you know whatever happens. You know, obviously, uh, you know, the calendar. There's nothing really set yet. Yeah. You know, as far as you know, there. It, all the promotional companies are like that. They're still trying to figure out, uh, you know, uh, figure some things out uh, regarding this whole pandemic. But other than that, we're just trying to stay ready, man. Trying to stay focused as possible and and, and, and see what happens next. Yeah, and, you know, speaking of that, as, I mean, it's so much uncertainty and everybody's barely kind of getting back into the, the swing of things. Um, as you said, you, you had a date locked in for, you know, what would be a month or two from now. And now, you know, you're, you're not sure. You're just waiting on that call. Um, how close would you say you'd be ready to if they gave you a call and to say, hey, we'll need you in September, October? How close do you feel you'd be ready for that? Oh, no, we'll be ready. Absolutely, I'll be ready. I mean, again, I've been in the gym for three for three months now. Yeah. You know, like, that's just why, you know, uh, uh, I have no family here. So, obviously, when I come here to California, it's, you know, it's because we're working, you know. Mm -hmm. We're training and we're working. So, um so uh, yeah, man, I've been I, I've been you know training. We're already sparring. I mean, you know, we've been you know been working for over well over a month now uh, as far as sparring and stuff. Uh, you know, and I, I you know my weight looks good too. So you know, you're trying to just maintain it as somewhere where I'm comfortable and where I feel strong during the sparring during all the work. So absolutely, you know, if I get a call for you know September, that's what we're hoping now. It seems like every month they're like yeah. if it's july then you're hoping you get a call in, in august <laughs> if it's august at all oh, okay we're maybe we're assuming it's gonna be in september you know because uh you know uh obviously you know golden boy uh you know that they, they just had their first show which is uh good you know they got they're getting the ball rolling yeah. and then their next show is uh august 28th so uh you know there obviously there's not much going in between that so now you just have to be realistic and expect that hey hopefully you know they get something in september and and, and we'll be in line of you know, maybe find September. So that's all we're hoping, you know, and uh, I understand that, you know, there's a lot of fighters that are, you know, that are thinking that way and yeah. they're hoping to, you know, get that call. You know, there's a lot, uh, you know, it's not like they could put on, uh, you know, 10 or 15 uh, 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 fights on a card, you know, yeah. it's, you know, it's only, it's only five or six and, uh, you know, but again, we're just trying to hope that, you know, we, we, we get that call and, and uh, but absolutely we'll, we'll be ready. Yeah, and uh, as you said, you know, it's just about being ready and it's understandable with the situation that's going on that you can't be, I mean, you want to fight, but you can't be, oh, just throw me on there now, throw me on there now because it's the economics of everything. I mean, as as I pointed out, you're not one of the guys that's like 3-0, and 4-0. and I mean, you're highly touted. Now you're up there. You're no longer uh, a regular prospect. You're about to go into the contender status, so... It's a little bit more money that you go with. That's a higher caliber Absolutely. of a fight. 
So it's absolutely, you know, every fight, uh, you know, uh, not saying that when you're three and zero or four and know that that uh, you know that that uh, every fight isn't important. But yeah. at this stage, as you as you as you mentioned, uh, every fight is important. You know, especially when you know you got a you know you got a regional title, so you're you know you're yeah. you're, you're starting to climb in those rankings. Exactly. And every fight, every single fight is important, and you know and. It, and, and every fight, you know, you have to have that mindset where hey, every fight is going to get tougher. It's going to get, you know, the opposition is going to be a little bit more, you know, it, it's going to be up there. So, uh, you know, so obviously, yeah, you, you have to, you know, you have to have that in mind. And, and that, you know, uh, now we're, we're in that we're in that stage of our career where, you know, uh, every fight is, is important. And, and how you look, you know, is obviously, uh, you know, is going to determine what, what the outcome is for, you know. For, for the future and, yeah. and your your next couple of fights after that so so definitely yeah so as we said you're a higher level of, of a prospect now seeing what some of the other fighters went through like on the top rank bubble the fighters that were highly touted that were given the the, the pool were upset does that even put you on higher alert for when you do return because some of these you know gatekeepers unknowns unheralded fighters they're fighting for everything and some of them have come out and put on a show does that even put you on higher alert knowing what you've seen so far during the pandemic era of boxing yeah i mean uh, i i think that you know uh, uh as a fighter you have to i mean especially during this time i think that every fight i mean especially in a, in a, depending on you know on, on the platform because all platforms are different but yeah i mean this is a very important time where you know you could take a you know, you can take advantage of, you know, yep. uh, you know, there's uh, a prime example, as, as, as you noted, uh, in those top rank cards where they had they had fighters, you know, that they, they, they realistically you'll probably never get a, a shot on yep. being on, uh, on national on, on TV. TV. And hey, they're they're fighting for their lives. You yeah. know, like, hey, maybe I'll get, you know, maybe I'll get some recognition and and they, and, I, you know, I have somebody sign me or, you know, and these are guys that are, you know, pro- promotional free agents yeah. or even guys like the, the, the Clay Collards, you know, yeah. who are, you know, that they're they're like gatekeepers where they're you know hey all of a sudden these guys are you know the, the these guys are, are are making a name for themselves and now you know the the boxing world is starting to yeah. you know, show them some love and and, and 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 you know and obviously they they you know they'll get paid you know they, yeah. they get a paycheck and, and they'll get those opportunities so yeah i mean you know you look at that and and and, and obviously it makes you uh it makes you feel you know be alert that hey even though these are tough times i mean you still have to you know uh, you know, work your butt off and, and have that mindset where, you know, hey, uh, you know, when my next fight may be, you know, may, may be my biggest opportunity yet. So exactly. why not take advantage of it? Yeah. And then, as you mentioned, Clay Collar, he started off as, hey, we're going to throw you in there with this kid. See what you could do. Get us some rounds. Oh, you won. OK, we're going to throw you in there again. Oh, you did it again. Hey, now you're the A side. Go see what you can do. Knocks a guy out. Now he has another shot. I believe they said the twenty second. Now he's got a bigger fight, a bigger platform, and like you said, he's cashing those checks during the time that a lot, not a lot of people are earning money. Man, he's making maybe ten, twelve, fifteen thousand. He might have made sixty thousand so far. <laughs> while some some people are out here like, man, what Wait, am I gonna do? <laughs> some people are like, man. Yeah, yeah, man. That, Maybe that, I should start that, fighting, that, huh? Like, you know what, that, it, it, dude? There's, I mean, you you just learn to appreciate that, yep. you know, like just as a whether it's a fighter or just a fan in general, you learn to appreciate that because you know he's doing, you know, he he's doing his job, he's yep. doing his thing. I mean, he stepped up and and and, and you know, and, and, and that's how it is. You just yeah, you just gotta give him nothing but props, you know. Yeah, exactly, because he made the most of it. I mean, he came out, showed up did what he had to do and now it's like and he's earning it you know i mean he's got people calling for him saying hey, i could take him and that's when you know you've really made it at a point when you got other people calling you out so hey more props to him and you know good luck to him the rest of his way you know i'm Absolutely. i'm excited to see him fight again now like i said man you you i've seen you honestly since the beginning um, I'm a big fan of yours. I, I've liked your style. I've liked the way you come up. Um, I've told Roberto Diaz about you from from like over a couple of years now. He was actually surprised. He's like, "Oh, you watch him?" I was like, "Oh, yeah. I was like, dude, I watch from fight one of a card to the last fight on a card. That's just the way I am." 
So I had seen you and I was like, hey, how's how's Luis? When is he coming back? And he was like, you know, everybody asked me about Canelo, Ryan or somebody. He's like, I'm surprised, you know, not in a bad way, but that sh- the first guy you asked me about was Luis. I was like, dude, I'm a big fan of his. I love his style. I love the way he fights. He was like, oh, well, he should come back. And then I think that was right before you fought for the regional title. And uh, he, he sent me the message. He was like, here's a link to his fight because um, – I don't think it was on TV, right? The... It was on. It was on Facebook. Yeah. It yeah. Was, yeah. Uh, yeah. It was on fa- uh, Facebook. Watch. Yeah. That's so he... when I fought uh, for uh, Gomez. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was like, "Here's the link," and I was like, oh, "Okay, I got you." And I, I was, I forgot where I was at, but I'm sitting there watching it on my phone, and I was like, "Okay, there's like, let me put in work." I was like, "Cool," and I was like, "Hey," uh, I was like, "He put in a good fight," and he was like, oh, "Okay, man, cool." And then uh, I told him last week, I was like, "Hey, bro, I'm gonna have Luis on." He was like, oh, man, I'm happy for you. He's like, I know that's like a big get for you. And I was like, man, I was like, I've been trying. I was like, I'm glad I got him on here. So, uh, yeah, man, I've been well, watching. First of, all, you- first of all, before you guys continue on, I re- you know, I, I want to say, you know, so, like from the bottom of my heart, I really appreciate the support, no you problem, know, and, and, and I know, you know, sometimes being, uh, you know, uh, not being from here in California and, you know, sometimes, you know, obviously I'm a you know, Puerto Rican kid fighting in California and fighting against a Mexican, yeah. you know, it's like. Uh, you know, you're not going to have many fans, but uh, <laughs> just the way, you know, you just like you mentioned that you appreciate my style and, 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 you know, and obviously, I mean, this is the first time that we actually get to, you know, uh, uh, talk, uh, yeah. you know, uh, via one-on-one in person uh, that, you know, you're able to, uh, you know, know me as a, as a person and my character, but uh, I definitely, you know, definitely appreciate that support, you know, and, and, and definitely, I mean, that's what I want to do, you know, whether it's uh, here in California or wherever, you know, I just want to continue to, to, to showcase my talent, show, showcase my uh, what I what I have to bring, and I know that we're gonna continue to get better with with each and every fight, and I feel like that's what we've done, and uh, you know, and, and continue to you know uh, make these fans, these yeah. fans, you know, you know, like yourself. So uh, yeah, man, I, I really appreciate that. No problem, man. And uh, I, I always tell everybody, yeah, you know, I'm from California, I'm Mexican, no doubt. I mean, since I got it into this though the bias of who I root for has completely gone away because I've gotten to know so many people on a personal level that it's, I don't have a bias. I don't, I mean, I don't care if they're Mexican, white, black, uh, um, Asian, wherever they're from, Puerto Rican, anything. It's like, I just want to see a good fight. So a lot of that was instilled in me when I was a kid with my dad. I mean, he always rooted for the Mexican, but he, he had favorite fighters from different eras. Like I tell everybody, Julian Jackson and Terry Norris were some of his favorite fighters. Me, one of my favorite fighters growing up was Asuma Nelson. And I was like, what? Well, you're Mexican. I'm like, so? I was like, Asuma Nelson was bad, dude. Like, if you yeah. don't know. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, um, Macho Camacho, I, made his, I met his son a couple years back. And that was like one of the coolest moments I've ever had. You know, got to speak to him about everything from his dad. I was... It was cool. So things like that is like that bias completely went away. So, yeah, I don't care where you're from or anything like that. If you're a good fighter, man, I'm going to watch and I'm going to support. That's just the way it is now. So oh, That's love, man. Definitely yeah. not. As a, you know, and it's just, you just learn to be grateful, man. Yeah. So I appreciate that, bro. No problem. So, as I said, you know, Puerto Rican fighters, you are Puerto Rican. So I'm going to ask you this because I get a lot of heat for this. When they talk to me about top Puerto Rican fighters of all time. I feel that Miguel Cotto is so underrated. Which one is your favorite Puerto Rican fighter? And where do you have Cotto if he's not number one? Well, Cotto, it could be easily made the, the I guess, uh, you know, it, it's uh, the debate uh, whether that Cotto is the most successful Puerto Rican champion. He might not necessarily be the... Uh, let's just say the most loved or, yeah. you know, or, you know, because there's always, even it doesn't matter who you are, where you come from, there's always going to be bias, you know, yeah. especially when, you know, when it comes to, uh, you know, Puerto Rican champions and stuff, I and mean, you being as a Puerto Rican, uh, me, my, my, my favorite fighter was uh, Tito Trinidad, uh, you know, Felix was, you know, there's somebody that I, I uh, one of the reasons why I actually started uh, uh, watching boxing or started actually uh, uh, fighting. And uh, you know, um, just watching his style, um, his connection with the with with his fan base, I mean, it's something that you just I I, I just kind of fell in love with, yeah. you know. And um, and uh, you know, me, I you know, born in '93, so obviously all through all through the '90s, I got to watch, you know, uh, you know, 
Tito do his thing, and and it was hu- it was huge. It was huge, you know, in the, in, in the house and the family parties and all that stuff. And then uh, I, when I'm already fighting and stuff, I uh, you know got to watch Miguel Cotto, and I was a huge Miguel Cotto fan as well. Uh, so you know, uh, but yeah, I think that uh, you know, going back to uh, to that that statement that you made that Cotto being one of the most underrated, absolutely. I mean, he's uh, you know, he's a three time you know three time world champion, I believe. Is it three or is it four? One forty. Is, is it 140, 147? Also, he's 47? more, right? 140, think, uh, 147, 54, and 60. 60, yeah. Because yeah, uh, so Sergio, four. yeah, when he beat, yeah, he fought Maravilla, so yeah. that's four, yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So that four time, you know, so he's, uh, uh, you know, that, that that could be easily stated that, you know, he's the most successful Puerto Rican yeah. fighter of all time, you know, as far as, uh, you know, becoming a, a you know, a four, four division, division world champion. champion. Yeah. So, so, you know, it's. So that you know that, that could, argument could, could easily be made, you know. Yeah. But again, there's you know there's always uh there's always bias and stuff. Yeah. But uh, but uh you know obviously uh we've gotten the chance to even work along with Cotto Promotions. Uh you know all my fights uh, in Puerto Rico that you know uh, have been you know thanks to Cotto Promotions and you know obviously they're 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 linked with uh, Golden Boy. Yeah. So uh, I'm very grateful for them. You know for them giving me the opportunity to to showcase my talent uh back in Puerto Rico where you know where most of my family lives and. And, and where I've made it, you know, made it clear and made it be known that I want to, you know, well, I, I want to continue fighting in, in Puerto Rico and and, and, and uh, keep representing that, that, that you know, that Puerto Rican flag and, and obviously make that make, make that pursue as a world uh, at a world champion uh, representing yeah. uh, the island. Yeah. See, and uh, me, I'll be honest, I disliked Trinidad growing up as much as anybody could and i'll admit it i mean i watched his fights but i didn't like them and as i got older i was it was funny i just sat there and i thought one day i said you know what part of the reason that i enjoyed these fights that i wanted to watch him because i know he was gonna bring it i know he was gonna bring it no matter who it was and eventually it was like all right man you know respect to him like no doubt but kodo i was always a fan of kodo i don't know why it's just something about the way he fought, the the heart he would always show. I enjoyed watching him fight. So, to me, he's the number one Puerto Rican fighter. Tito's up there, but as you said, successful, Cotto, but loved, without a doubt, it's Tito. And, I mean, they love Tito out there. So I, Oh, I, I yeah, mean, no, yeah. Tito, Tito is, uh, you know, T- Tito is, uh, how they say, el campeón del pueblo. Yeah. You know, people... You know, people are just like, you know, they're always going to love Tito no matter yeah. what, you know, no matter what, what he get into or anything, you know, Tito just, you know, they, he just a very humble human being. Yeah. I've gotten the pleasure to meet him, uh, you know, so uh, he's just somebody just that, that he, if he walks into a room and he sees 90 people, he's going to shake every night, every, every person's <laughs> And in that room, it's just how Tito is, you know, That's and you cool, learn man. to appreciate the personal yeah. side of him. And then obviously what he did for, you know. Uh, uh, you know when he was in the, you know, on, on top and, and and just the way he did it too. You know he was a yeah. he was a he was a knock artist. You know everybody oh. knows about that left hook that he had. So you know and he brought so many great moments to yeah. uh you know to us Puerto Ricans. Yeah, and and that's my thing was I used to as I said I mean I wasn't a fan of him I I didn't like it but eventually it was like man he brings it it's gonna be fun. Um, so I mean eventually I learned to respect it. And, you know, as you mature, as you get older, it's like, no, there was a reason I was watching these fights. He was the main yeah. reason. Um, I think the funniest thing, though, like when I bring it up, is that one of the, when I was 12 is when he fought Hopkins. <laughs> and uh, everybody, like, that whole time, oh, he's going to whoop Hopkins. And see, like I tell people, I've been watching boxing, I think, since I came out the womb. So I was like, you guys don't know about Hopkins. Hopkins is a beast. I was like, and he's set at 160. Tito's yeah, he was just up. too big. Yeah. He was just too big. Yeah, Tito. Yeah. Tito was like with every fight. Okay, well, okay. Now from 154, then he went yeah. up to, you know, to 160 yeah. like that. You know, yeah. it's just like, you know, yeah. so it was just like, and Tito wasn't, it wasn't necessarily like a physically big, he wasn't a big you know, dude. Like a yeah. big frame guy. You yeah. know, he was a, you know, he was a slim guy. You yeah. know, you could just compare the body sizes of yeah. Hopkins and him. Only thing is that Tito could crack, you know. Yeah. He, 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 you know, if he hits you, he, he's gonna put you down, yeah. you know. And uh, and I think, but you know, obviously when they saw when he fought Joppy, they were like, oh wow, you know, this yeah. is what's gonna, he's gonna, he's gonna to Hopkins. He's, yep. I mean, just Hopkins, Hopkins and his style, you know, being just a, a very crafty guy, yeah. you know, how we say mañoso, yeah. uh, you know, it's just a, 
You know, it what he it wasn't gonna be like a, you know he wasn't just gonna. It wasn't gonna be a typical be, Tito fight. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, it's yeah. like you know some people like you know Joppy kind of just stayed there and yeah. you're taking these punches like man, you can't let him yeah. you know you can't let him hit you you know so uh, so yeah I mean I you know and and that was a uh, that was a pretty devastating moment yeah. for me you know when he <laughs> when you know when Tito lost to Hopkins I mean I was such a big Tito fan I yeah. mean it, it broke my heart just seeing you know your your yeah. your idol just kind of yeah. go down and you know he didn't just he did. lose he, yeah. he got stopped you know yeah. he, he got stopped and it was the last round and yeah. uh, you know he got dropped so yeah. he dropped and stopped so yeah. you know it was a uh, you know it was a devastating for yeah. me yeah, you know I was I was I was only what eight years old so yeah. you know. Me yeah. being young, but uh, oh, yeah, that hurts. But yeah, I mean, you just gotta respect, you know, you gotta respect Hopkins. Yeah. And, you know, I've gotten the chance to meet Hopkins, and he's, you know, he's giving me some good advice and stuff. So, as again, as you get older, you start to appreciate yeah. all these fighters, right? Because all of a sudden, uh, you know, Hopkins is a villain because you know, uh, you he know, did, what he did yeah. to Tito, and I, uh, you know, and I, it's like as you get older, as you mentioned, you know, you start to appreciate these yeah. guys and. You know, a great champion who you know who who fought for you know since what, he was like fifty or something. Like, you yeah, know, this man, man. This, this man was you know not not many people could do that. So uh, you know, he was definitely a very spe- uh, special fighter. Yeah, as, as uh, I spoke to Douglas Fisher of Ring Magazine, he said Hopkins is one of the last of the great fighters, and I mean it's true. It was it was something you had to watch to appreciate it. But for me, that night was so good because I mean, not only did Tito lose. But I won money on that fight. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Even better. Yeah, so it's like I tell people, man, that's probably one of the most biggest moments for me because it was like, oh, he lost. Yes. And then I won money. But then I think when I watched it, when as you said, when he was knocked out, I remember sitting there and I was like, man, you could tell Tito really wanted it. Like it hurt after a while because I was sitting there and I was like, man, his dad came in. I was like, hey, it's okay. And I was like damn and i think that's where it really started to turn for me with tito it was like man like i felt bad when he fought my orga i was like oh whoop this dude's ass dude like whoop him man i hope he just <laughs> bust this dude apart so it was like and that was a few years later but i was like i hope you beat this man down like please and yeah that was he gave me that moment so um yeah. it, it, as i said you get older and you appreciate these things so yeah that was definitely a big moment but with, with um, as you said, you know, as you mature, you get older. Some certain fights, like as you said, that one broke your heart when Deloya beat Chavez when I was a kid. Man, dude, that one shattered me. Cause I could only, yeah, I can only imagine. I mean, I know that's sometimes that's even a touchy, you know, a, a, a touchy one even till this day. Yeah, dude, I was seven years old. There's a theater here where I'm from. I'm in Fresno in California. There's a theater called Theater. Me- it was called Teatro Mexicano downtown nothing but mexican fans all in the in the in the theater loud everything they stopped the fight immediately beer bottles cans everything flying my dad was trying oh, to pull man. me out like he's a let's go let's go dudes were coming up to me like grown men were swinging and i was like man what the so i'm swinging back at people and we got outside and <laughs> the cops came but like at the end you just seen grown men just come out crying and i was I was like, man, I was hurt, and then I think about that's what people tell me. Yeah, we seen people at the at the Trinidad fight come out crying, two or three in the morning, all Puerto Rican, all dressed up and just in tears. And I was like, man, that's the same thing, then you know, because that, 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 that just hurt. and that just tells you sometimes you yeah. know us as you know just as fighters, man, just like you know the responsibility that right, we have, right? It was like, yeah, and you, you don't even like, notice hey, it. <laughs> you have you have people that look up to you. There people yeah. that you have grown men, you know, crying yeah. and. You know, just you know, if you have a bad performance or something like that, or a loss, man, it's not only not only you gonna be devastated, man. You have you know, there's there's fans and you have people, family, and all this and that that you know that that they sincerely look up yeah. to you and you know and, and they appreciate you. So it definitely you know, it, it's a responsibility that we that yeah. we have when we go when you get in that ring. Yeah, and, and and that's why I tell people during times like this, especially fighting, not just boxing, because now we have MMA as well, but. This is really what pulls, what helps pull a country out of bad times. Like I've told people, yeah. if you go to a park and there's people playing basketball, there's people playing soccer, football, baseball, whatever, you might look around. But if you see two people start fighting, oh, you're running over there to watch the fight. It's not going to be like, hey, these guys are playing football. Let's go watch them. Okay, it's 
hey, those two dudes are throwing down over there. Let's go see what's yeah, going yeah. on. You're going to run to the fight. That's what grabs your All attention. Over there, yeah. yeah. So I always tell people during tough times, during things like this, this is what will grab the attention of people. So sports like boxing and MMA now will pull the eyes because it's it's something that captures you. And especially when you hear the story of some of these fighters, man, like there's no way. I mean, Chavez grew up from nothing. Trinidad came up, you know, from nothing. And they became two of the biggest icons in Latin America of all time. And it's for fighting. It wasn't, you know, breeding or something like that. It was just for fighting. People fell in love with what they did. So it's, as you said, you know, it's a responsibility that sometimes you don't notice until a certain point. Then you're like, man, people follow me like that? Oh, okay, cool. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. So, as you said, you know, you, you fought in Puerto Rico before. You want to be another champion. What was, like, when you came out to the first event that you fought in Puerto Rico, what was that moment? What was the reception like for you? Oh, it was amazing. Uh, this was actually in August of 2017, um, actually right before Maria hit. Oh, uh, yeah. Ironically. And yeah, during all this, you know, it was uh, obviously a tough time for, for the island. I mean, you know, I had family that didn't have power, you know, uh, for for nine, ten months. You know, we over here complaining about we don't got Wi-Fi, yeah. this and that. We don't have phone service. And, you know, these people didn't have power, Anything. you know, for months. Yeah. So, I mean, but, uh, you know, either way, it was uh, right before that happened, uh, you know, in Ponce, and it was my first time, I was actually... Uh, uh, was I, I was two, I was two and oh, so that was my third professional fight. And, uh, yeah, it was just a very, uh, very special moment. I had family there. I mean, they were loud. Uh, you know, uh, we definitely, you know, we sold a lot of tickets and I think that's what, you know, that's, uh, another reason why, you know, maybe they want me back, you yeah. know, I mean, you know, uh, uh, and they've given me that the opportunity to do so. Um, but yeah, it was just a great moment, uh, you know, just, uh, finding it from my family as a professional, because I fought there as well, uh, when yeah. I was in the amp amateurs and stuff fought there many times but you know actually as a professional where you know they get to they've seen the progress i've made through you know my entire career and and, and something that i've you know i've been doing since i was a little kid and now to get to be at the point where you know i'm fighting here as a professional in puerto rico is just a very special moment and uh you know even to my to my last fight where i was a main event you know yeah. which was that was uh you know my first time being a main event and, and it was just a great, it was a great moment. And the way I won, you know, is a, you know, third round knockout. Yep. I mean, it was just spectacular fashion. Everybody going crazy. I mean, that's just, you know, it's just, you know, you just cherish those moments. You know, it's something that I'll never forget for the rest of my life. Yeah. And, and um, as I said, I've seen essentially from fight one to where you're at now. And yeah, I remember seeing that, that fight that you had in Puerto Rico. And I was just like, man, you, that's what, I think that's where you really caught my eye where I said, this kid's going somewhere. He's going to be something. And the more that I've seen you fight, the more I was like, man, this kid's, you know, he he's going to be there sooner rather than later. You know, some prospects develop at a slower pace. And it's not, you know, to be disrespectful. That's just the way it happens. You've, you know, come along a lot quicker. You've grown faster. And, um, I mean, I'm, I'm excited to see when you're able to throw, throw down with one of the higher level contenders because I want to see you in there. But I know it's not something that, oh, you know, go fight number two and see what happens. It's, you know, it's a process. But, yeah, I just know Absolutely. you're going to be there. I mean, yeah, as, as I mentioned, every every fight is important, you know, and you got to make those those strides, you know, with each and every fight, you know. And I think that it's important, uh, you know, and this is, uh, let's just say uh, some advice to just a young fighter to have that approach where, you know, you have to be realistic and be like, hey, uh, you know, with every fight you want to get better and better. So keep making those strides where you could, you know, you're in the gym, you're working hard, but you're continuing to learn, you know? Because um, yeah. sometimes, you know, for some some of these fighters, you know, uh, getting all these knockout wins and this and that, all of a sudden they get big headed and they think that they're, the, you exactly. know, that they're good as they, they are. And I, I feel that, you know, and I, I give a lot of credit to my, to my trainer, Ben Lira, who's always installed this mindset on me is like, hey, we're not, uh we're not we're not just in there getting ready for the next fight we're eventually all these fights are going to add up because we're getting ready we're getting ready for those top guys that the, the guys are on the top of the mountain yeah so you have to have that approach that, hey right now what, the, what we're learning in the gym what we're working on in the gym and all the sparrings you know whether it's today or you know last week anything that you're eventually getting ready for those fighters that you're going to see up there because i mean that's what we're you know every fighter when they get into this 
you know, because they want to become a world yep. champion and they want to be on the top. So, uh, so you know, uh, every single moment they have to ha- they have to have that mind frame, that approach where, uh, you know, every fight is important, but you want to learn. With every fight, yep. you want to, you know, you want it to be better than your last, uh, because that means that that's you know that's what you know uh, uh, progress is being you know is being made is and, and it's being you know and it's shown. You yeah. know, and and I think people people like yourself will appreciate that. Hey, you could see the, yeah. you could spot the progress. You could see how you know he's getting better with each and every fight, and 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 that I mean I think that goes a long ways. And eventually, you know, that's uh, at the, uh like as like I mentioned, is to eventually uh you know meet those top dogs. Yeah. Uh, you know, and uh, for me in my case, the 140 pound division. Yeah. So see, and and as you said, you know, the people that knock everybody out again, that's not a knock on them, but there'll be questions about them when they get into that tougher fight when they're not knocking somebody out how are they going to respond with you you've gone through those fights you've gone through some some drag drag out battles so that question's already there it's i mean that question's already answered it's not going to be oh how's Lee's going to respond when after six seven rounds of of a beating the opponent is still there no we already know what to expect you already know how to handle it as opposed to some guys that 21 and 0 get put in there, first guy that they hit with the best shot just sits at them and smiles. You know, yeah. how's their mindset? You're not going to have that problem. Yeah. So I, I believe, too, that's why I see you going up a lot faster is because you've got that experience with those type of fighters and those type of fights. So, I mean, it, it's the, it's a press, it's a process, but everything you're doing is to get to that point, as you said. Exactly. Also, There's a purpose. There's yep. a purpose. And as you said... You're in there to win a world championship. You're in there to fight the best. And no matter at what point of your career that you're at, you you feel that you could beat that champion because if you don't, then what's the purpose of being there? If you don't believe in yourself, nobody else will. So um, I, uh, Edgar Berlanga, he posted up about wanting to fight Canelo and people came at him and, oh, you know, you're not there yet. We all know that. He knows that. But he feels that one day he's going to be in that spot to bring it. And that's what you want to see from a fighter. As you said, you're at 140 you love, yeah. right now. You, yeah, you, you feel love like seeing you can that confidence. I mean, you love, yeah, you love, you love seeing that confidence, confidence from, you know, from somebody and, yeah. you know, having that ambition because, you know, we all know, you know, as in this sport that Canelo is, you know, he's a, you know, he's a, he's the, man. He's the biggest star. He's yeah. the biggest star in boxing. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, who, who wouldn't want to, you know, want a piece of that. And yeah. I mean, he, you know, it's Mexico, Puerto Rico too. On top That's of that, thing, you know, yeah. he's always going to add a little, uh-huh. you know, a, a little, you know, a little, little star power to it, you know, yeah. but, uh, but yeah, no, I mean, yeah, somebody like that, you definitely give credit and, uh, you know, uh, you'd be so, you know, a lot of people would be surprised, you know, and aren't familiar with the sport, how mental this sport is, yeah. you know, cause you could have all the physical, abilities and all the talent in the world but if your head's not here that confidence is not there uh, i mean you know it's What's hard to go a long yeah. ways you know so the mentality has a huge you know uh, it's a huge factor it's yeah. a huge factor yeah and, and that's why i always tell people shoot when i was training when i was a kid i was you know looking around and i'm like man when i get older i would love to fight trinidad mayweather deloya and they were like oh you're out of your mind i'm like no, but those are the guys that I know are going to be there if I'm able to get to that point. And I'd rather fight the best guys to know where I'm at as opposed to beating up some guys that, for all I know, left a day job and came over here to fight. Because yeah. you, you, you won't know you yeah. won't know the truth about yourself. So with you, as you said, you're 140. I mean, you guys got some dogs in that division. I mean, Jose Ramirez, Josh Taylor, Regis Prograce, while Maurice Hooker moved up, but... Arnold Barbosa, all these guys that are there. Jose and Josh are probably going to move up by the end of the year, so all those titles are going to become vacant. If Absolutely. You, so that's yeah. a that's an opportunity yeah. for you know for you know, and we look down the line when it when, you know whether it's next year or in a few years, we look hopefully we definitely you know we we're definitely hoping that in yeah. a couple of years that uh you know I'll be in that you know top ten you know, uh, rankings, you know, consideration of fighting for a world yeah. title. We definitely, that's what we envision ourselves. So yeah, definitely. I mean, it, it's going to be a great opportunity. And, and, uh, again, there's always going to be, yeah, yeah. this is always, you know, a tough weight class has always been that way. And, uh, man, I, I definitely, you know, I'm looking forward for that. Yeah. And as we said, you know, people moving up, moving down, someone that's probably going to be there by the time you're in that position to fight for a world title, is probably going to be Tia Fimo Lopez. Devin Haney, mm-hmm. 
these Absolutely. type of guys. Yeah. Yep. So, I mean, one forty when you're there for that title shot is going to be even bigger than it is now. And I mean, eventually, you're not a small built guy. You know, you're going to move up as well. So, you're going to be meeting these same people for the next few years. So, man, that that's where I tell people if you if you're not a hardcore fan of boxing, just pay attention to to fighters go to youtube look at this because then you'll see the the excitement from other fans when they know hey this guy's gonna be there in a couple years and he's gonna be fighting the guy that you're in love with he's gonna be fighting that guy that you think is the best and we'll see where he's at like like i tell you man I, i've seen you and i just know you're gonna be there and uh I, i'm pumped to see you bro i'm like i i've I, like i said i'm a fan i mean you could probably see it in my face bro like i've been watching you so i know you're gonna be there bro it's it, it's, a, it's to me I like getting the fighters before they get that spot so I could tell people, like, bro, I talked to him before he won the title. Um, I talked to him before he did this. You know, that's it's just something I like to see. And especially with fighters like you, man, you're so humble. You, you know, you have a good story. You went through the amateur system. You're grinding to get there, man. So it's it's something cool to see for me. Yeah, man, and God willing, man, we'll, we'll, we'll you know, in, in a few years from now, and, you know, when, when we get in that position, man, we'll go back to this, you know, to, yep. to this uh, very, our very first, you know, uh, you know, interview, you know, yeah. so we'll look back to this. Yeah, we'll look back to this conversation and be like, hey, man, look, you know, it, it's crazy how, you know, you just continue, you follow that process where, you know, you stay focused, you stay hungry. Uh, and of course, you stay humble, you know, and, and, and true to yourself and, and good things will happen. Yep. And, and, and we'll eventually, you know, we'll get there. So definitely, man, I, I, I'm looking forward to it just as you are, man. Yeah. And uh, real quick, I want to give a shout out to Knockouts with Nika. Thank you for the support, man. You already know. I told you we're going to get you on the show soon. Big fan. Um, saying keep up the good work as well, man. And, uh, Appreciate yeah, man. It. Uh, so just to let you know, man, I don't know if this is like a, a luck thing or not, but a lot of fighters, when I personally talk to them, eventually they have become a world champion. Oscar Valdez, Surdo Ramirez, um, uh, come on, come on, I know I got more. Andy Reese. Andy Reese before he fought Joshua, I spoke to him, and honestly, the first fight I ever covered was Andy Reese in Lemoore, a little casino outside. So he's one of the first guys I ever interviewed. So him, uh, Jose Ramirez, uh, so many different fighters. Cool. All right, we had a little miscut there, guys. We'll pause it for a second. We'll be right back, see what's going on. Remember, guys, we are live. Just waiting for him to come back on. Oh, there you go. All right, cool. I got a, I got a phone call, so that's yep. why uh, all that happened. So I apologize. No, no problem. Yeah, no. I, as as soon as that happened, I was like, I'll bet you it's a phone call right there. It's a phone call, man. Yeah. I was like, <laughs> I try to tell people, hey, I'm gonna be busy during this time or something, but you know, I, I'm sorry. That's like, oh, that's no problem. Me. I apologize, brother. Hey, no problem. That's why I tell people whenever they're watching, if something happens, I'm like, hey, remember, it's a live show. Things happen, man. <laughs> so yeah, no problem. Yeah. But, but yeah, like I was saying, a lot of guys, uh, Regis Prograce, before he fought for the title, I had spoke to him maybe six months before. So I'll, I have a pretty good track record with guys I speak to ending up winning. Jojo Diaz as well. So a lot of guys that I talk to, eventually they come up winning. So, hey, I, so I'll see. take it, man. I, no, I'll <laughs> definitely take it. You know, and there's, there's some of these guys, I mean, obviously me, uh, me and Jojo, uh, we're pretty close. Uh, yeah. You know, uh, we... You know, we have the same manager. We've known each other for years. Andy Ruiz, uh, he actually, uh, we, uh, we, I know him through Big Bear when we were up uh, training in Big Bear. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so yeah, man, I mean, uh, you know, I, I, I'll definitely take it. <laughs> if it's a good sign, bro, I'll take it, yeah. you know? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's funny because I, I never really thought about it. It was actually my dad that was like, you interviewed him, right? I'm like, yeah. 
oh, well, him too, right? I'm like, yeah. And then I started thinking, I was like, dang, they really went on to win. So I'm like, hey, I'll, I'll take it. And I know a lot of the fighters, once I tell them, they're like, oh, okay, yeah, all right. Well, if I win, then that's part of the, the good the good luck right there. So, hey, if you win, hopefully, man, you get to that spot because I would love to see it as well. A um, couple other things, man. Uh, you know, you're with Golden Boy. You know, a lot has been said here and there over the past few months with certain fighters not being, you know, too happy, we'll say. I won't say the name because I don't want it to go all wild, but your relationship with Golden Boy, I've never heard you, you know, come out and say anything bad about them. Your relationship, how is it? And, you know, how much do you do you feel you owe to them to be in the spot that you're at? No, well, they said I, 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 I'm a person that's very grateful. Uh, I've always been grateful. I mean, uh, you know, Golden Boy got gave me the opportunity. Uh, they signed me. You know, uh, they could easily pass on me. Uh, you know, and, and and they did it. They signed me, and I'm always gonna be grateful for that. You know, so, um, you know, and uh, you know, that again, I, I, I. I'm a person that I, I always like to envision myself as a professional person. So, you know, even if I, if, even if we were this happy, I wouldn't, you know, be placing all that, you know, yeah. uh, uh, blasting it out on, on social media, like, you know, some people, you know, so, you know, what I keep, you know, keep myself, if, if I have a concern or, 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 or anything regarding that, I know that, you know, I could always go and, 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 and talk to, you know, somebody there that, you know, that, that, that you know, that we could just talk and, and, and figure it out. You know, I know that uh, Golden Boy, that they, uh, you know, that, that, that they're very, uh, you know, they're very high on me. Uh, I'm pretty sure they wouldn't be wasting their time yeah. with me if that wasn't the case. You know, so I'm uh, just, uh, I'm always been grateful, always grateful for, you know, Golden, Pro Golden Boy Promotions uh, giving me that opportunity. It's one of the reasons why I came to California. You know, I, mo I, ma I made the move here. You know, as soon as I signed with Golden Boy, you know, this is what it's all about. So, uh, you know, so I came in here. I'm starting my career, you know, uh, you know, a, a, a kid from the Midwest, you know, uh, I'm a, you know, I'm, a, I'm away from home. But, you know, I'm out here just following uh you know uh chasing my dreams and 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 i'll always be grateful to 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 uh to uh you know just the company and people that yeah. you know given me this opportunity to to do so and yeah. to do exactly that which is you know to become a world champion and, and continue to follow my my uh my goals so uh so yeah no i'm just you know i'm just grateful for them and and, and i just look forward to what they uh have in store for me next yeah and uh one of the things that i really admire about golden boy because every promotion's brings their fighters up differently. I've always told anybody with Golden Boy that I love the way with prospects, they don't baby them. You know, once you get to a certain point, we're going to find out if you're real right now. And I, I love that because also, as we said earlier about a guy that gets all these knockouts, when they get to that point, they might get stopped themselves and it could have been a waste of money. So with Golden Boy, it's never, oh, this guy's 15-0, and 0, but what does he have? Oh, he's 15-0? Oh, he's probably been in some wars, and he's probably been in those drag-out fights. So with that, I've always liked that from Golden Boy. I've told Robert that so many times. Like, man, I love the way you, you match your prospects because you throw them into the fire and find out right away, can they do it? So as I said, with you, when I've seen your fights, I mean, you've had a couple rough fights, and it's like, oh, no, you know, that's what they do it for. It's not to, to play around. It's not to waste time. It's to find out right then and there, do you got it? So... I mean, absolutely. You say and that. as a fighter, you gotta, you know, you gotta understand that too. You know, you yeah. gotta understand that hey, they, these are these are fights that'll help you down the line. You know, exactly. these are helps that these are fights that, uh, as I as I mentioned earlier, you know, uh, eventually we're we, you know we're we're looking at the guys that are on top of that mountain. Yep. So you know that uh, you know it, you know you, you you these guys are tough. You know, they're yep. they're they're world champions for a reason. Yep. So you know when you get up there, you might as well be ready for it because yep. you know there's how many fighters have we seen? I, uh, you know, as you as you said. That are twenty one and zero, and then they fight. You know, they they fight somebody that's you know that, that's actually a lead, or you know, and and, and they get exposed, yeah. and then you never hear about them again. So exactly. when you get up there, you might as well be ready for it. And these are the kind of fights, you know, that that that'll uh you know that'll definitely get you ready for that. Exactly, and and again, that's why I like Golden Boys' approach. They they make sure you f we find out about you before it's too late. So one of the other questions, man, and I already posted it on Twitter about I was going to ask you. Uh, this is for Salim and Delilah. Uh, you're Spanish, bro. As you said, when you start speaking Spanish, they think you're Cuban as opposed to Puerto Rican. Why is that? <laughs> well, that that's been that that was actually uh, here. But I, 
what I've noticed here, you know, living in California for the past few year time, I think it's because uh, they're just not used to many Puerto Ricans over yeah. here. So, you know, they, they're probably just used to some Cubans and, you know, <laughs> being out here. But not, yeah, not many Puerto Ricans. So, uh, but as far as with Suleim and Delilah, uh, you know, these are the, the these are girls that I've that I've known you know, for years now, uh, do, you know, that amateur, you know, yeah. uh, going to, uh, that amateur background, going to all the nationals and, you know, Delilah being an official and, and working for USA boxing and Sulem as a, as a fighter. I actually first met her when I was 14 years old at the ringside tournament. So, you yeah. know, these are girls that, that, uh, you know, uh, these are my friends, you know, I, I love them to death and, uh, but it's actually the accent, man. That's what it makes <laughs> them go crazy, bro. Yeah. So it's the accent, man. So they just, they, they just like the accent and, and they always dig it, man. So I don't know. I, you know, uh, I, I guess it, it's been good to me. Let's just say that. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, let's hear some of it so people can be brought in. So some of the girls get brought in right now. Say anything you want to say. Nah, pues, saludo, mi gente. Estamos aquí hablando con eh, mi pana Mike y muy agradecido por la oportunidad y, y espero que sea, no, que no sea la última vez. Yeah, I hope you understand what it is. Oh, I bro, I speak Spanish, Spanish right? fluently. Oh, okay, yeah. cool, cool, bro. The nada, yeah, the for nada, those that I just say, hey, I'm yeah. grateful for the opportunity. Thanks to Mike, uh, you know, and hopefully this is this won't be the last interview that we do. It's only the uh, first of many. The nada, the nada. Ojalá te traemos para atrás muchas veces y cuando eres campeón del mundo podemos decir, hey, estaba en la programa. Shoot. Así es, así es, mi yeah. hermano. Siempre. Yeah. We might get you on one of the Spanish episodes, bro, because I'm going to start the Spanish side on Friday. So we might Let throw you know. on there as well, yeah. Definitely, man. You yeah. know, aquí, aquí siempre a la orden. Siempre. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Cool, cool, cool. And, uh, yeah, man, I got more people, man. Uh, my boy Edward is actually a big boxing fan. Uh, I met him through coaching football. When I started coaching football here, he's a big fan. I mean, he's told me he's giving you a thumbs up, man, shouting you out as well. So, Edward. Appreciate it. Appreciate thanks, it, bro, man. Shouting out. Um, you know, as I said, you know, it, it's a tough time right now because of everything that's going on. Uh, I actually had a bit of a scare with it where I work. A couple people got it. They were in close contact to me, so I was actually placed on a quarantine until I got a negative result. So um, I tell people, you know, it's something to take serious, but you can't let it take over your life at this point. Um, I have some family members that actually did test positive. Um, thank God they're doing better. So with that, man, it's just, you know, it's a tough time. It's something that we didn't know we were going to get this year. You know, who can foresee a, a pandemic hitting like this? So I know it's been hard through this year for a lot of people, but, you know, I, I'm happy to see so many people, like I said, in the sport of boxing, you know, thriving right now. Um, honestly, for you, though, I would hope I would have seen you in the ring already, but uh, hopefully, you know, real soon we'll, we'll get you in there. Um, is is there any, you know, particular fight or fighter that you might be looking at right now? Uh, as of right now, no. I mean, uh, you know, I I'm always, you know, uh, we uh, and that's a good thing that you know, uh, uh, with our uh, communication that we have with Golden Boy, you know, as uh, you know, I, I I I'm pretty sure that they believe they, you know, they believe me and 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 uh, you know, see me going uh, places. So you know, all the opponents are there for a reason. So you know, I, I you know, I'm a person that I look forward to you know what they have in store for me. Uh, you know, for any fighter, you know, like I said, I'm. Uh, at the end of the day, you just name them, and I'm gonna be ready, you know. And I know that's gonna be a purpose, and and and, and you know, and I I'm, I'm have a lot of confidence in my team, you know. Just great, you know. I I, I feel like I have a great team uh, that they they they're doing the best for me, and they're looking out for me, and and, and you know. So I, I I never have any doubts, you know. So I'll always be what well, something that you can always expect from me is that I'll be ready. I'll be 100 yeah. percent ready, and I think that I've I've shown that throughout my previous fights. And, and, and uh, you know, it maybe it's a reason why you know I'm the current NABF champion. You, you know, know so I've you know I've just been been doing everything that I I feel like I've done uh, uh, uh you know all, everything right. You know, and yeah. I know that Robert Diaz has uh, he's even said it himself. You know that you know he just he, he everything right. Just continue to uh, uh you know to 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 follow that you know that that road that they're they're they're, they're or that path that they're you know that had me on yeah. right now and. And I'll continue to continue to learn, to continue to grow, and 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 continue to showcase uh, what I have to the world. Yeah, and uh, as I said, speaking about that, you know, with the fights and uh, what you're showing, the the well, if you've gotten to that point yet, you've been fighting since, as you said, you know, amateurs, 14 years old up until now. 
has the the fight game has it slowed down to you where you're in the ring and before you even see the shoulder movement or anything like that, you can already see what that opponent is going to do. Has it slowed down to that point yet? Yeah, no, I mean, I, 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 I mean, I, this is, I think, uh, the pro- the progress that we made as a professional, where you know you start to uh, make those adjust- adjustments quicker. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, uh, me personally, I feel like I've always had a professional style, even in the amateurs, yes. um, and I was still able to have a, a, a successful uh, amateur career. So, you know, I, I feel like that's just you know some of the things that I've always had uh, those uh, those instincts, how they say. Uh, yeah. But yeah, I mean, I, I feel like I've gotten better with each and every fight. And even in my last, I, you know, I got to experience some adversity getting cut uh, yeah. twice, you know, for the first time and, and fighting, uh, you know, he was a tough fighter, uh, yeah. Herbert Acevedo, uh, you know, as a fight where I learned a lot, you know, and I, I, as I mentioned, I mean, these are fights that are going to be, you know, uh, these are important down the line where, you know, you, you're going to face uh, adversity. You're going to go through moments like that. And, and, uh, you know, so uh, I, I've learned, you know, a lot through those fights where, you know, some certain adjustments that we can make and continue to work. And, and you know, as I continue to mention, man, those top dogs in the mountain, yeah. man, that's where eventually what we're getting ready for. So that's what we're going to be seeing, you know. And, and, and so by the time that we're in that position, we're going to be ready. Yeah. Well, we're going to be, hey, we're going to be making those adjustments. And, 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 you know, and that's, you know, that's what that's what it takes to become a world champion. Yeah. And as you said, you know, it's the adjustments. And as you said, your, your style was quickly adapted into the pro style because you already had it. So, um, yeah, I, I researched you, you know, a while ago. I looked up some of your amateur fights, and, yeah, the style you had was more set for pros. But um, the cuts, that's something that you know you could already deal with. So when you do get into that big fight, hey, I've been cut before. This is nothing new. As, yeah. as you said, certain fighters, they get cut for the first time. They're kind of like, all right, what am I doing? How do I fight with this? But you, you've dealt with it, so you know what to do. One question that I like to ask a lot of fighters is, you, you right now, you're still in the younger part of your career. Any fighter from any era, and I'm not saying like as a trash talk way, but you that you would have loved to share the ring with? Uh, I've actually gotten this question multiple times, man. <laughs> and I, I, I'll, I'll continue to give the same, uh, simply because of, I guess, my style, uh, you know, uh, I, I think that it's known that uh, I'm a really good body puncher. Uh, yeah. One of my, specifically, my, my, my punches that left hook to the body. Uh, you know, I've gotten a lot of stoppages. I've hurt a lot of people yeah. with that punch. <laughs> uh, so uh, so I'd say, I, I you know, and, and it was actually one person that, that actually mentioned it to me. And he was like, you know what? Like, that's actually a great fight. Uh, but uh, the yeah, Mickey Ward. Irish oh, Mickey Ward. Yeah. Uh, a guy that, a guy that ha- had a nasty, one of the most devastating body punches. Uh, you Come know, back and, and a guy who was just yeah, and who was just uh, 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 just a, a warrior, man. Uh, I mean, I'm, the man just kept coming forward, and he was always there. Uh, you know, uh, I think that that would be a fun fight. I mean, uh, I probably have to, you know, I'd probably have to box it, man. You know, stay uh, away and, and watch out for that left hook. But just uh, you know, and, and I'm a I'm a, I'm a very uh, I'm a very thinking fighter. You know, I, I, I I'm selective, so I'm always thinking, and, uh, and that's just how I am. Uh, you know, and my technique. Uh, so, uh, you know, just being those chess matches as well. So, I mean, I think, uh, you know, it'd be a chess match kind of fight yeah. and, and whoever's, Hey, whoever's, uh, left hook to the body uh-huh. lands first. And, you know, that's where, that's where yeah. you expect some damage. Yeah. And <laughs> that would actually be a good one. I mean, that's honestly not what I would expect for you to say, but that's, that shows yeah. the knowledge of the fight game because oh, yeah, Mickey definitely. Ward is known to some casual, but every hardcore fan and oh yeah, that body shot, I mean, if you've ever seen him, he was losing fights bad. Left hook to the body, game over. Guys down, that's it. So, oh yeah, that would be great. That, that's I, I didn't even think of that, but man, yeah, now you yeah, got my yeah. head spinning on that one. So I like it. Everybody, everybody, probably everyone probably expected like a, you know a Puerto Rican fighter or something like that. You know, yeah. along those lines. A Latin American like, fighter, give, yeah, yeah, definitely. Give, yeah, give Mickey Ward, man. He's yeah. uh, you know. But that was actually something a question that uh you know I've been asked before and uh so I I might as well keep the same answer yeah. you know keep the same answer because I mean I know uh, you know just with that you know yeah. uh with that body shot man you know that's my punch and that's yeah. always that's always gonna be there so you know that basically it's I, I'm pretty sure that's the you know the scouting scouting report on me already yeah. that he must have left foot to the body keep your elbow down <laughs> yeah uh, now one other question as you said I mean obviously you're a student of the game if you know fighters like that. Any fighter from any era, present or now, 
that you watch that you may take a little things from their style and place it to your own? Yeah, uh, so, I mean, um, I was like that uh, with, uh, believe it or not, it wasn't much as far as, like, trying to adapt because, uh, you know, Tito Trinidad, it wasn't, uh, he was a puncher, you know, yeah. so he wasn't necessarily the most technical fighter. You know, I, per, uh, per se, I'm a little different where yeah. I am, you know, I'm, I would consider myself a technical uh, technical fighter, so I, I always looked up to, uh, you know, Miguel Cotto as far as style, technique, but I, you, you, you know, a lot of people get surprised when I mention this, and, you know, it's true, I've heard, I've said it previously many times in, in different interviews, but somebody that I really, I really loved, I mean, as far as just the sweet science and his counter-punching abilities was Juan Manuel Marquez, he's always going to be one of my favorite yeah. fighters due to that point where he's a technical fighter, his counter-punching skills I mean, just it, it was a thing of beauty, you know. And, I, and as I mentioned a little, right, uh, you know, in, a pre, in the last question, just those chess matches, yeah. you know, like it, when it becomes a chess match, okay, hey, uh, you know, it, it, you it, you have to be studious in there. You have yeah. to be. I mean, aside from just being focused, I mean, and that's you know part of the adjustments and and, and the changes that you know you have to make in a fight. And you know, with Juan Manuel Marquez, I mean, just his counter punching abilities and and him setting up that punch. You know, whether it's, you know, a punch, you know, a body shot or an uppercut or anything. Or you the know, famous I mean, right hand. Like, really, 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 really looked up to that. Yeah. And as I've said before, he probably has, maybe in the last 10, 15 years, one of the most best counting counter puncher techniques of all, you know, that, that there's been. You know, it's probably Mayweather and then Marquez is probably right on his tail because that's the counter punching skill he had. I mean, he's got one of the most famous knockouts ever with Pat Gowan. It was yeah, a yeah. quick slick move and a right hand over the top. I mean, you know, and I mean, just, I mean, just, just his style as well. I mean, yeah. he was a counter puncher, but I mean, he was, a he was, he was a dog smart. too, man. Yeah. I mean, these are fights that like, you know, with him and Casides, uh, him versus Juan Diaz, uh, you know, fights like that where, man, th these boys are going at it, yeah. you know, and, and he's a bloody mess. And, you know, even in those fights with Pacquiao, you know, they, yeah. with, with Pacquiao and all that. So, it's, you know, he was just a warrior, man. Yeah. So, uh, aside from him being not only a great counter puncher and just a, you know, uh, just a, a, a technically, a, you know, just a, a great fighter. I mean, he was, you know, he, he, was, a, he was a warrior, man. Uh, and as you said, not just technical, he was smart. When he fought Juan Diaz, mm -hmm. I'll never forget the line that they used. This is probably two of the smartest fighters in all of boxing in the ring. The ring IQ is off the charts. As people know, what Juan Diaz, I mean, he was in college while he was fighting, getting his license, getting his degree, and then Juan Manuel Marquez, I mean, one of the all-time most intelligent fighters in the ring because of his IQ. And I remember hearing that line and thinking, you're right, this is like ring IQ off the charts. And you could see it. It was a brawl. But you could see the technique of both, like, all right, let me see. I'm a, he's going here. I'm going to do this. And at the end, it was Marquez who adjusted the most and, you know, pulled off, again, one of the best knockouts of that year. I mean, that perfect right hand uppercut, man, it was perfectly placed. So, um, as, hey, that's a great one to have, too. So that's two real, real school of boxing that you have right there, man. Uh, that, that's that's appreciated. I, I like that, man. I like Thank that. You. Not Thank like you. some <laughs> other fighters, like oh, tech, technical answers. Oh, you know, I go with this guy, this guy. You with Mickey Ward, Juan Manuel Marquez. Like, oh, okay. <laughs> so you know what you're talking about. So that's a good one, man. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so man, uh, you know, it's been about a, almost an hour, man. So first, man, I want to give you a thank you for coming on, man. I really appreciate it. As you said, hopefully we get you back on. Uh, we're gonna definitely work on doing that Spanish one too. Um, you know, it's an honor to have you on, bro. I like having fighters on at any point of their career, especially when they're coming up, just because I, I, it's a pleasure to see you get to a certain point. And also, man, anybody that you train with, anybody from the gym that you have, if they want to come on, bro, even if they're in the amateur level or one, two, and three, you know, whatever, let me know, bro. I'm gladly to bring them on to platform for every and any fighter. So, you know, they're, they're welcome on the show at any point. Hey man, I really appreciate it. Thanks for having me on. Thanks for the invite. And again, I mean, uh, you know, uh, I, I know that this uh, definitely won't be the last time. So I'm just really grateful, and I appreciate your support. You know, at my career and and all that. So uh, really grateful, man. And uh, and again, I just want to throw a little 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 shout out to to my Milwaukee Bucks, Fear the Deer, because I know you're uh, rocking the that Laker jersey, man. So Fear the Deer, baby. Yeah, See you guys Lakers. in the finals. 
Okay, okay, we'll see. <laughs> as long as uh, Houston don't go, don't stop anybody over there. <laughs> oh, okay, yeah, man. Hey, Houston, Houston was no. looking nice, but yeah, I'm not gonna I, lie. I, they I, they, I, they I, could ball. I don't like them, but they could ball. I, I gotta admit it, man. Yeah. <laughs> you can't hate on Russ Westbrook, man. You can't hate on them. But um, definitely not. Yeah. So before you go, man, anything you want to say to the fans, anybody out there listening right now, uh, go ahead, man, and give a shout out to anybody. No, yeah, just wanna, yeah, just uh, you know. Thank you to everyone who's, you know, there and tuning in and, 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 and supporting my career. You know, I just, you know, I hope that you guys continue to, to follow me and, and, and you could just always, like, as I, as I mentioned, uh, you could always expect, you know, uh, 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 Luis Feliciano is always be ready and, and, and I'm excited for what's, uh, you know, coming up even during, you know, during a rough time, but, uh, but yeah, man, uh, God bless everybody. And I hope everyone stays safe during, you know, these, these tough times and, uh, yeah, if you guys want to continue following my career, you guys could follow me on uh, social media as well, Instagram, Twitter, uh, Luis underscore Feliciano, also on Facebook, uh, Luis Angel Feliciano. So, uh, yeah, thanks thanks again for this uh, opportunity, bro, and uh, and I'll be looking forward to the next one. No problem. All right, real quick, guys, 26 Sports, as you already know, uniquely yours for the banner, Notorious Graphics for the T-shirts, also uh, shout out to my boy Eusebio Tiny. Today is his birthday, man. Happy birthday, bro. Hope you're living it up right now. Uh, also, Dirt Magnus Janitorial, three or five five nine three seven four nine one 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 two. Check him out for any home business or office needs. Also, Kelly Smoke Shop number four North Maple in Illinois. Check them out for any needs that you have as well. Um, again, man, I want to thank Luis Angel Feliciano for coming on. Definitely won't be the last time. And it'll probably be both languages back and forth as when we can get them on. Hopefully, we see you in the ring soon again, bro. Uh, thank you for everybody to tune in. Everybody on the chat, we'll catch you guys on Friday. I will have my first Spanish episode, and I will have two-time world champion Antonio De Marco this Friday. So again, man, thank you, Luis, for coming on. Everybody for checking in. Have a great evening, and we'll see you soon.